Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss how seepage occurs through an earthen dam, that is an embankment dam. So let us consider a homogeneous earthen dam with this much water in the upstream and provided with a drainage blanket in the downstream near the toe. So this drainage blanket is made of coarse grain material which provides an easier drainage pass for the seepage water to take so that it doesn't have to flow all the way through this length of the this width of the earthen dam and way before it reaches the toe it has an easier path so instead of going like this it will follow this line now how to exactly draw this phreatic surface or the seepage line for that it is said that it will follow an approximate theoretical parabola which is called the Cosinus parabola and theoretically it is said that the focus of the parabola will be the point where the bottom surface of the dam starts becoming permeable so in this case it is going to be this point that is the starting point of the drainage blanket so if this is the focus of the parabola then we need to find some other information about the parabola so that we can draw it so that other information is given in the form of another point of the parabola it's found out empirically that when the parabola is extended to the upstream side it will intersect with the water surface the upstream water surface at a point which is 0 0.3 times l from the intersection between the water surface and the upstream dam surface. Now this length L is actually the horizontal length of the wetted upstream slope that is this length. Now to draw the parabola we need to recall the, the one proper property of parabola that is any point in a parabola is equidistance from its focus and its directrix. So directrix is a straight line. Now since one of the points is known which is this point. So from this point the distance of the focus is this much. Now we need to find another line which is at this much distance. So how we are going to do that is draw an arc by taking this point as center and radius as this whole length. So when we draw this arc and then we extend this water surface like this, it will intersect at such a point and from this point if we draw a vertical line, so this vertical line has the same distance as the distance between this point and the focus. Now, based on this, we can draw the complete parabola where the vertex of the parabola will be midway between the focus and the directrix and the entire parabola can be drawn like this. Now, the actual seepage line is found to be somewhat different than this parabola because near the upstream surface, it will deviate from the parabola in such a way that the water enters the dam in a perpendicular manner uh, that is the seepage line will be perpendicular to the upstream slope of the dam that means we can use an arbitrary curve that starts perpendicularly from the dam surface and meets this parabola smoothly so that's how we draw this seepage line Now, that is only one of the lines through which water is flowing and that is the topmost line and which also represents the water, groundwater surface inside the dam. Sometimes we need to draw all, all the other streamlines or the flow lines 
so that is done based on a flow net now let's try to understand why this line this curve the seepage line is perpendicular to this upstream surface that's because it's a streamline that is flow is taking place in di this direction when flow is taking place in this direction that is if it's a streamline it must be perpendicular to an equipotential line so an equipotential line will be perpendicular to this streamline so in this case this upstream surface the upstream slope of the dam itself is an equipotential line how can we say that is because if we measure the piezometric head at any point in this surface along this surface we are going to get the same piezometric head the piezometric head is summation of pressure head which is given by the water above any point in the surface and a datum head so datum head is its height from some arbitrary datum so this way this point will have the same piezometric head this point will also have the same piezometric head this point will also have the same piezometric head that means all these points have the same piezometric head along this line so this line itself is an equipotential line another equipotential line will be this river bed or the reservoir bed we can assume it to be fairly horizontal in the upstream so here also it is an equipotential line because the piezometric head at any point here here and here will be equal so so what will be the direction of the flow lines from these points they will enter the ground surface like this they will enter the river bed perpendicularly and in the dam they will enter the dam perpendicular to the slope so based on this we can draw something called a flow net so in this flow net one of the surfaces we already know the phreatic surface it will come like this and it will enter the drainage blanket like this in the drainage blanket also it will enter perpendicularly because at this surface the pressure is almost equivalent to atmospheric pressure that means compared to whatever was the pressure inside the dam this pressure is very low and almost equal to the atmospheric pressure so that means at this point at this point at this point and at this point the pressure is equal almost zero or at atmospheric pressure so this line itself somehow represents another equipotential line which is the last equipotential line in case of the dam so now we can draw the end parts of these flow lines we know that they will be entering this drainage blanket perpendicularly and they will enter the dam surface also perpendicularly the only problem is the only problem that is left is drawing the in between parts so that can be done somewhat in an arbitrary manner like this and like this when we are talking about flow lines entering the foundation then this line will enter perpendicularly and flow like this this line will also enter perpendicularly and flow like this and so on
in between when we want we can draw other equipotential lines like this the only thing that we need to be careful is about is uh, these angles need to be perpendicular right angles so the grids are supposed to be rectangles are supposed to be squares sorry and this way we can draw the entire flow net We'll discuss a more detailed version of the method of drawing flow net when we when you come back to the college after the lockdown is over. So that's all for now. Thank you.